Hello everybody and welcome to another photography talk and this time I want to talk to you about the five essential skills for photographers and uh, at the beginning some uh, technical skills and next uh, something that is uh, in my opinion more important not just in photography but in every aspect of our lives. Before we begin, as usual, if you want to support the channel, put a like, subscribe, share with your friends, check out uh, on the description, in the description, you can find all the way to support my channel. No matter if you are a beginner or an experienced photographer who want to improve uh, his photography, but you need to work on your skills. And uh, a little promise, if you want uh, some quick tips that just you push the button on an app and you became uh, the best photographer in the world, skip this video, it would be boring for you. If you want to make some effort and do something uh, serious to improve, follow the video. First skill you need to have is the knowledge of the technique. I'm sorry but uh, I see a lot of people going around and uh, saying oh it's just a matter of uh, you know be creative and all these kind of things. Uh, the eye and all these kind of things. That's true. It's something that uh, you need creativity, you need uh, to have a good eye and these kind of things. But uh, you need to know the techniques absolutely perfectly. You need to know all the basis of what you are doing. And uh, this is very easy to achieve. It's very easy to do. There are plenty of books uh, about photography, plenty of tutorials and so on. I always suggest uh, to read uh, the Ansel Adam trilogy because in my opinion it's still very relevant also for uh, uh, digital photography. It gives you the structure to understand uh, the light, to measure the light, to pre-visualize uh, how the light will be converted in your image. It will give you the ability to expose correctly in the best way and get the best from your sensor or your field. So I suggest that trilogy, uh, mostly the camera and uh, uh, the negative are uh, the one explaining the zone system. The camera explain you something important is the depth of field and why it works that way and so on. So all the technique that you need is in that three books and the print the third book is still uh, relevant uh, if you going to print uh, photographies also if you use the, the digital media and do this kind of things and by the way learning to print uh, in my opinion is one of the most important things because i don't consider a photograph done unless it's printed if you think you don't need the technique think twice for a very simple reason. I give you an example that is not related to photography, but uh, if you want to drive, you need to know at a certain point your car. If you just use your car to buy the groceries and go around, you don't care. You just have a car and uh, you bring it to the mechanic, you don't know what the car does, you turn it on, drive around is not absolutely a problem and it's the same thing if you just do snapshot with your camera and with the modern camera by the way you have all the automatic things uh, that exposure and focus and so on that uh, let you have good results without any effort but if you want to do something more than a snapshot it's like uh, if you want to start to do a long trip if you want to do a long trip uh, you need to know something about your car. You need to recognize uh, if the tires are not uh, well uh, even uh, inflated. You need to know if there is a strange noise or something like, like that. And uh, you need a little knowledge and you can get that reading the manual of your car. And it's the same uh, with the camera. If you want to just go do something a little bit more uh, than uh, a snapshot, you can read the manual and you can go on and know a little your camera and you can do something better. But what I think is that uh, if you go into photography and you are looking at a video like this, you want to do much more than uh, a casual photographer. You want to do photography as a profession or as a very 
deep hobby and in that case it's like uh, to get a car to do races and if you do races you need to know every detail of your car you need to know how the engine work you need to know how the transmission work and so on because you must be able to predict what the car will do you must be able to recognize every problem and every characteristic of your car and so on and it's the same with photography if you want to do photography in a professional way you really need to be the master the camera must be something that you don't even notice so you need to have the ability to previsualize an image and uh, transform your idea your visualization in an image and to do this you must know 100% technique so it becomes something that is uh, secondary you don't even think about it and you can concentrate on your photography so this is the first thing that you have to learn go read books watch tutorials uh, go to workshops and learn everything about the photographic technique the second skill you need is uh, to master the light the light is the essence of photography photography is basically writing with the light so you need to be able to manipulate the light to measure the light to work with the light you must be in a strict relationship with the light and uh, that is another thing that uh, nowadays is under-evaluated because uh, you have uh, cameras that do everything for you. So and they are good, they are precise, so you go around, you have these uh, electronic viewfinders, so you see the image on the viewfind in the viewfinder, exactly the image captured by the camera and all these kind of things. But it is something that, again, you depend on the camera. If you want to be a professional, if you want to be a good photographer, you need something more than that. And so, study the light. To study the light, the best thing you can do is to play with the lights in a studio. That's something that is, uh, no matter if you just uh, usually take pictures uh, outdoor uh, with natural light and so on, but if you know how to manage the lights in a studio you will start to learn all the relationship between the lights you will start to learn the different source of illumination and so on and uh, yes you can uh, go from uh, you think uh, i just take pictures outside so where is the problem but uh, if you learn how to master a huge uh, bank of light in a studio attached to a flash or to a led uh, led source or nowadays but uh, you've mastered that you can have uh, the similar light uh, every time around i'm using natural light here but i using the same the same scheme that i use in studio i have a windows that is the equivalent of a bank i have a reflector and so on so master uh, the studio lighting look at photographers uh, look for books uh, about that one of the best book i read about light was a manual by broncolor was book by broncolor about lighting broncolor they produce in my opinion the best absolutely best uh, flash units uh, and uh, studio equipment uh, in the world and they do a lot of uh, uh, teaching at the time when I learned was book right now you can go on the website and find a lot of tutorials and so on but uh, study studio light try it get uh, some uh, light sources they can be cheap light sources uh, that uh, you know just to test but learn the light in the studio this will give you the power to control the light and to understand the light also when you play with natural light this is something that nowadays is uh, underrated the studio photography is kind of underrated you go around and there's a, a lot of people just using natural light and doing a lot of things outside without uh, studio experience in my opinion the studio experience is what gives you the best knowledge of the light. The third skill you need to acquire is the ability to create great composition. 
Composition is a difficult, difficult thing, and it's uh, probably what gives, uh, if the, you, your technique is correct, you know how to use the light, composition is what uh, is the 90% difference from a, a great photo or just a correct photo. So, composition is essential study composition there are many uh, books uh, and videos and tutorials and so on my suggestion is go to the source if you need the books by our name about the visual perception and here there's a link to one that i did a review uh, if you learn that you will know almost everything you need to know about composition and you will see that a lot of work around uh, about composition is just a derivative from uh, our name but study composition you have to read the books you have to study the story of photography uh, and i don't mean uh, remember all dates and all these kind of things i mean get books uh, with uh, beautiful photographs from the past and uh, and i say book because when you see a photograph printed is much different than just something online so get some books and study composition read their name get books about photography look at uh, the authors that uh, give you something that you like and study their composition uh, but to do that is you need to have the base and the base you get it with uh, their name or other books but i suggest their name at that point you can really understand what is going on and you have to train your eye and your mind to create good composition this is probably one of the most difficult part of photography to grow you have to continue to train your eye and uh, sadly we are in an era where there's people just talking about the rule of third that really sucks and uh, i quit with the professional photographers of america after uh, i sent uh, some uh, images for their contest and i was listening online to the judging and uh, one of my images had a merit and uh, but was challenged this lady judging was yeah but it does not respect the rule of thirds and I was, what the hell? That's the most banal, unbalanced, and stupid form of composition. Yes, it's a quick trick to do something better than, uh, you know, the, 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 the portrait with the head in the middle and uh, cut here and all these kind of things. That's okay, but that's just uh, something that is little. And composition has not tricks. You cannot just follow easy tricks like the rule of third or the golden spiral all these kind of things you need to understand what a balanced image is you need to understand how to give power to your message and that's with composition so composition is the most essential thing you must have and know and manage without even noticing it when you create photographs the fourth thing you need to learn and this is not a technical thing and this is probably one of the most difficult thing for a lot of people is uh, to have uh, what is called a good education in uh, good manners let's call it good manners be polite be uh, a nice person and this is absolutely important. When you take photographs, you interact with the world. And I'm so tired to see people going around and think that just because they have a camera, they can do everything they want. I see people, uh, a lot of time I saw people pointing the camera to my face or something like that without asking and usually uh, this is the answer and uh, usually they get uh, my middle finger in front of their camera and not picture if I see them. But uh, that's that, that's the uh, interaction with the people. There's uh, interaction with the property. I see all these uh, things like urbex and uh, where people go in private property, no matter if they are abandoned or not, without any respect and start to take pictures.
pictures. This is something that you must learn to not do. You must uh, really develop your education, develop your skills, so when you interact with other people or the property of other people, you do it in the correct and polite way. So you ask permission, you evaluate a scene. If you do, for example, street photography, ask yourself what you do if you are on the other side of the camera. If you are the subject of the photograph you are taking, you think it's okay or you think what the hell. So start to put yourself on the other side of the camera mentally and uh, be correct, be polite. There are many rules, too many rules in this world that uh, we go to absurd things like uh, having to pay uh, the French government if you take a picture of uh, the Eiffel Tower at night and want to use it uh, for, you, we make money selling them the print or something like that. That's absolutely, in my opinion, BS. But education and common sense is not. So, okay you are photographing uh, the Eiffel Tower that's evidently something that is made to be public but uh, I don't know if you see a beautiful yard uh, in the you walk in the city you see the arch entrance this is very common in Italy you walk inside the internal yard and take pictures it's that correct that's kind of private there's a door there's a at least there's, there's an arch or something like that so you go inside call see if there is people uh, if there are people there you can ask can I take a picture and 99.9% .9 of the time you meet new people and they say it's okay they are proud of their yard and so on so learn to be polite to be polite is to be polite in every aspect of your life and uh, when you do photography if you are for example talking with a client do it in a polite way. I saw this guy a few days ago that arrived with a client and said, Yo, bro! And you think, really? Good morning, sir. That's the way you go on. Then if you see that uh, there can be some more uh, less polite conversation, more intimate conversation, you go from there. But you arrive saying good morning, say, not your bro. Your bro, you say to your brother not to a potential client so i saw these kind of things and uh, that is something that is uh, an attitude that we have and i see a lot around that is absolutely absolutely wrong so don't point your camera on the face of the people without asking don't uh, invade private property don't be an ass just because you have a camera be polite be kind and interact with people. The fifth skill you must have and you must learn is to be ethical. Nobody talks anymore about ethic, but that is the most essential thing. Photography is something that can change the world. If you think there have been many photographs that really change the world and the perception of the world. You have some power. It can be the power to convince people to buy these glasses instead of these memory cards, but it's still it's a power. And uh, the power of photography is that it's connected to the idea of uh, reproducing the truth and all these kind of things. And in photography, as in your life, you need to have a moral code and use ethic and think about and you take pictures again street photography put yourself on the other side and think it's morally right and it's ethic for example to use the image where there's people doing something that uh, if you were on the other side you didn't want it showed or these kind of things uh, you do commercial photography where is your uh, limit where is the the border that you don't want to cross 
I did commercial photography for all my life and there were things that I didn't do. When a politician arrived, was organized uh, for the campaign. Oh, do you know? Yeah, you know, a doctor at the hospital. So, can you organize with the sick kid uh, so we can go there? I will be there smiling and we can see the, yeah, with, they vote for us, we can cure sick kids. My answer to the phone was, uh, first of all, was okay, probably you are from this party, so screw you anyway, but was screw you, I don't do these things. And uh, is the same uh, uh, on every aspect. Think about ethic. You have now the possibility, for example, to change the photographs a lot, to manipulate the photographs. You can change the sky, you can change, uh, you can take away parts of the photograph, you can uh, replace the trash can and all these kind of things. Think, is that ethical for you? You must create your kind of moral code about photography, what is for you important to communicate, to transmit, what are the limits you want to cross or not. And based on that, create your own ethic. This is one of the most difficult things. The education, the good manners are very difficult because you, if you are not born with that kind of education, it can be difficult, but uh, uh, it can be difficult to learn. But it's very easy because it's very easy to say to a person good morning instead uh, good morning sir instead of your bro the ethical part can be very easy to design your moral code and your ethic but it can be very difficult to do and i give you an example it, for me something that is uh, fantastic because uh, resume all the ethical concept that i know together is the four-way test. And the four-way test was invented by Herbert Taylor and became uh, uh, something that uh, done in the rotaries for many years in the rotary. The four-way test is very easy because it's simply of the things we think, say or do, you have to ask yourself, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it bring goodwill and better friendship? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? So this is a way to put together a lot of uh, different moral codes and ethics in something that is very practical, it's very easy to use. The four-way test uh, on one side is very easy because it's uh, very easy to, you know, just ask yourself those core questions, but to stay in it is uh, much more difficult. Just in photography, if you think right now, uh, is it the truth uh, and you think, okay, I removed something in Photoshop or doing these kind of things, still I stay in there. but do an effort to create uh, a moral code. Again, the four-way test is a great one to adopt, but uh, do an effort to create an ethic and be ethical when you work. You have power. As a photographer, you have a lot of power because you have the power to influence the world. You have the power to change things. Uh, think about the Vietnam girl escaping from the the famous Vietnam girl escaping from the napalm that really changed the world and the, how we perceive things um, think of the images of the 9-11 think all these kind of things you have a lot of power it can be commercial power it can be political power it can be uh, emotional power but with your images you have power so really design a code of ethic and uh, follow it and try to follow it and that will make the difference between a professional photographer and a prostitute for somebody we sadly are seeing right now a lot of prostitutes and very few professional photographers especially if we go on photojournalism and all these kind of things we see a lot of people just uh, uh, do what they are paid to do with the thesis they just take pictures to demonstrate the thesis uh, of the of the people the person paying and i think we must change this and we must start to develop uh, our own ethic uh, and follow an ethic so these were my 
five suggestions. As usual, I went probably long, but if you enjoyed the video, please put a like, subscribe, share with your friends. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. And if you want to go a step further, get Photography Dev Manual. On these books, you will have uh, all the essential the essential knowledge about the photography techniques is a great starting point to learn photography. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.